Hey, this is Meredith McDonough, owner of The Call Within, located in Alexandria, Virginia, I'm working remotely since the beginning of uh, March. <laughs> it is three o'clock on December 9th, 2020, and I'm here to talk today about what is a dark night of the soul. I will also segue into how to survive or how to, I would say, I don't like to use the word survive. I say how to, because it feels like you survive when it's over, how to manage a dark night of the soul. Um, so first, let me start off with, uh, you know, the idea that um, a dark night of the soul, I think, can happen to anyone. Um, in the spiritual community, it is something that happens quite often when people are undergoing spiritual awakenings. Um, I want to add an addition that we as a community have um, had many souls transition on after dark nights of the soul. Um, and this is typically because people are not aware or recognizant, rec rec recognizing of their true intuitive and empathic nature. And um, it can be very, uh, it's a very tough because sometimes, you know, people, a mental health expert may say, but they are may have already had depression and anxiety. You know, how do we know it's a dark night of the soul versus that? And the answer is, I don't know. I think only the person can answer that. But my goal of this recording is to describe what is a dark night of the soul? How do you know that you're having one and how to manage it? And I've had many. Um, and I say many, I've had them since I was probably in middle school, um, probably all the way now until even into my 30s. I just had one, well, two nights ago. <laughs> and again, um, you know, five years ago, I would have been like, oh my God, I'm hanging in. So let me just first start off with what is a dark night of the soul? So by definition, a dark night of the soul is a period of spiritual desolation, oftentimes suffered by a mystic in which all sense of consolation is removed. Okay. So um, my first most memorable dark night of the soul that I can really pinpoint was in my freshman year of college. And I was 18 years old. Um, yeah, I was 18 years old. And I remember it hit me like out of nowhere, like a ton of bricks. And that's one indication that's a dark night of the soul. You might, you might be having the best day, running on the beach with your friends, you know, like a movie. And then you get home and it's like, boom, 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 boom. And you're like, where the fuck did this come from? I oftentimes notice the dark nights of the soul uh, happen after the hours of midnight, not always. I and mean, they can happen anytime, but they typically, again, happen at night. Uh, that is the big uh, clue. It's a dark night of the soul. Um, so oftentimes happens in the nighttime and it does come out of nowhere. And it usually, at least in my own experience, um, for I recall, um, was that I felt very shaky all over. Um, I felt like I couldn't stay in my own body. Um, I felt like I questioned everything in my life, um, you know, from my overall purpose to why was I pursuing my, you know, why was I even playing sports at Hood College? You know, why was I doing this? Why was I doing that? Um, and I really felt like something inside of me was, I felt like I was in a self-destruct, okay? And I, um, again, I'm going to say is that I never had thoughts of hurting myself. It, it felt like I was going to self-destruct and it felt like I was like, you know, maybe I'm having like, you know, what's going on? You know, is this, is this suicidal thoughts? I don't know. Ah. Um, but again, and typically I noticed that as soon as the sun began to rise was when the, the symptoms, the, the worst of the dark night of the soul would abate. Um, so again, and a dark night of the soul can happen anytime. It doesn't just have to happen during spiritual awakening. Um, other times, dark nights of the soul is, as we know them again, again, I'm just repeating myself, is... Um, other feelings they may make you feel is that you just kind of feel like you want to jump out of your own skin. Now, some people might say that that could just be an anxiety. And the answer is yes, but you're anxious for really no real, like no, like nothing's triggered you. You're just anxious because you're anxious. Um, so some ways that you can manage um, a dark night of the soul is, uh, you know, number one is, is hold yourself, is really hang in there. Um, number two, like literally physically hold yourself like you're hanging on if you need to. Um, number two, I find that it helps to put something heavy on like a weighted vest or a weighted blanket. Um, number two, three, I like to sit on the floor. 
Um, I like to sit back down in the grounding. When I recognize that it's, I sometimes just call it a dark night of the soul. I'm like, okay, this is a dark night of the soul. You know, I'm going to make it through. Um, when I, before I knew they were dark nights of the soul, I remember I had to make an agreement with myself that no matter what happened during the dark night of the soul, no matter what came up that was so scary to look at or question or judge or whatever about came up, um, I had ground rules and my ground rules were the following was that I was not allowed to harm myself, uh, whether physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, number two, uh, was that I made no major decisions that, um, I would wait three days before I made any major decisions post dark night of the soul, whether it was a financial decision, whether it was a job decision, um, whether it was a relationship decision, um, because again, in a dark night of the soul, you are you, <laughs> but you are a very different side of you. So um, it's good to have ground rules in your dark night of the soul. It's good to build a, what I call a, a management kit. So again, you can get, you know, your, some crunchy food is good. Um, maybe it's a comforting blanket. Again, I think weighted blankets are wonderful. Maybe it's going out for a jog. Now, the only thing that I say about exercise is that exercise sometimes can make us avoidant of the dark night of the soul and what the message is trying to communicate with us. Okay? Because if we are in the loop of the circling in our mind of you know going around and around and around, which is what it feels like energetically. And again, I wasn't as sensitive back then, but now as a more sensitive person and, and how energy feels, in my body and in the shapes and the forms and colors it takes, it feels like a loop, like do, 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 going around and around and around. So get out of the loop. The idea is to anchor. Um, and I tell a lot of my clients to do this, but again, I'm telling you is anchor, anchoring in. Um, exercise will kind of keep you on an avoidance. And sometimes again, the best pearls of wisdom come from those dark nights of the soul. So the one I had yesterday, I was really feeling, you know, all sorts of, you know, just kind of like shitty. And I was like questioning my relationship and where is this going? And I don't know. And, it, and then I realized something dawned upon me as soon as I woke up this morning, I kind of just, I just hung in and I, I breathed through it. So that's number one is I hung in and I just breathed, I breathed through the discomfort. I let all of the uncomfortable thoughts just surface. I didn't latch in, you know, we very much want to, we want to take our hand and we want to grab them and hold them. Um, for a dark night of the soul, you just want to look at them. Even better, sometimes just better just to write them down. Maybe you write it down and you put the, the notebook on the other side of the room from you. If that's how far you have to put it out of your observation, you know, just do that. It's okay. You know, this is, this is kind of like, this is some real shit. Like this is, this is healing. <laughs> it's not the love and light. This is the healing. Um, and so uh, where was I going with that? Oh, and where I was going with that was, is that I just observed the thoughts. Um, as soon as I woke up, when you breathe through it, when you just breathe through the fear of like, okay, these thoughts are coming, they're happening, these feelings are coming with them, they're happening, I'm just going to kind of breathe through in through my nose and out through my mouth, and just be there, you know, just relax my body and just be there. And then oftentimes you're so exhausted from doing this because you sort of feel like you're just sort of like hanging on to the side of the pool or trying to ride the wave, you oftentimes fall asleep. Um, or the light bulb comes to you after you wake up or before you go to sleep. So the light bulb for me this morning as I woke up was, ah, control, I need to release control. I need to release control of my environment. Um, and for those you know who may not know me personally or do know me personally, my tendency before was to get up in like a mad woman rampage around my house and clean up after my partner because I like everything in its place. I'm not a control freak. <laughs> and, and so then as today, as I got up, I was reaching to put some things back and something said, stop. That's exactly what we told you not to do. Stop that. And I literally had to pull myself, take myself out of my house and go for a walk. Mind you, I'm out of the dark night of the soul at this point um, and call my dad and just say, what's up? And uh, realized when I came back in that really, that there really wasn't so bad. There really wasn't that much out of order. Um, so again, dark nights of the soul, although that seems very like, you know, insignificant, dark nights of the soul can communicate what the universe is trying to tell us, what our souls are needing us to know to pivot in direction for growth. Um, again, growth is not always comfortable. Um, so if you think of like the Incredible Hulk, you know, when Hulk is transforming from whatever his name is to Incredible Hulk, 
you know, it does not look easy and it does not look particularly fun. It looks just really painful. So please know that you will incredible Hulk after your dark nights of the soul, okay? And please remember again, um, if you are somebody who does, has been diagnosed with depression or anxiety, um, you know, if you do struggle with that and you are having a dark night of the soul, I highly recommend having somebody on speed dial that you can call. Um, and I also recommend maybe having somebody to talk to the day after to kind of soundboard it. Um, sometimes it just helps put it into perspective. So it's not so scary. Um, where was I going with this? So yes, what is the dark night of the soul and how to manage it? Now, dark nights of the soul, again, if you're a healer, um, an energy healer, you know, you're a mystic, you're a sensitive, you know, dark nights of the soul, I think are just kind of part of, part of what we do. Um, and I will say again, that now I'm 32 years old. I feel myself very, very, very blessed that I can sit here and talk to you today after some of the dark nights of the soul that I've been through on multiple occasions. Um, and again, know that there are many of us who have not survived our dark nights of the soul and have decided to take their lives instead. So remember that the world needs you. Um, you are a light worker. If you have a very big light, as, as a wise person once told me, Denise Heisler, you said the larger the light of the healer, the bigger and darker the shadow. So please remember that your shadow there is power in the black. Um, it is important. It is uh, where we need to grow and look at. And I promise you, when you allow yourself to go there and swim in it a little bit, you know, healthily, that you will be okay. Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll have benefit is what I'm saying from it. Now, last little note is if you are somebody who does suffer, again, from depression or anxiety, and this is something that happens a lot, now, dark nights of the soul, I should say, happen like every once in a blue moon. I say even less than a blue moon. Um, if you are somebody that has this happen a lot, then you probably should have somebody, a mental health support specialist, um, such as an LCSW or a psychologist or what have you, on speed dial. I really do think you should. Um, so especially if you've maybe had a pattern of, of suicidal tendencies, you know, you, you should definitely have it on speed dial. Because again, um, I'm not a mental health expert. Um, I know when things are out of my scope. And I can tell you that, again, dark nights of the soul are usually infrequent, but frequent and often, but not often. So I hope this is helpful for those of you who have suffered from dark nights of the soul. Thank you for staying here. Thank you for choosing to come here and not bounce out because it's, you know, hard. I say bounce out as in like leaving this earth plane as a, as a physical human soul. So again, share this with anybody who needs to hear this, uh, maybe who's experienced a dark night of the soul but doesn't exactly know what to do. And again, my name is Meredith McDonough. I'm the owner of The Call Within. You can find me on Instagram at Meredith at The Call Within, all one little thing, um, or www.thecallwithin.com. Thank you so much.